I think that that's what uh, children has been for me. So I actually just had a daughter just a little over two months ago. And for me, it's, uh, I, I came to the realization that um, if, you're, if you're expecting that you can be paying attention to something else, and then when the interesting thing happens, you can turn your attention to it. So like scrolling through Twitter, for example, and then be like, hey, when you smile, then I'll pay attention to you. You miss actually all of the thing about it that's interesting, right? You're watching this little baby flap their arms <laughs> as they're trying to connect. I'm excited, but how do I then move my hands and arms around in that thing? And it's been... um. I, I was not expecting parenthood to be this edge of chaos and it 100% is for me. And I realized that the only way it feels like surfing is if I put everything else down and pay attention to this thing. And, uh, yeah, that's been a fun experience for me. Yeah. And, and congratulations. Um, that's, and that's true that the parenting is, or, or kids, I mean, they're just basically something is profound about it. So it's true that like, it's very short and you could miss it if you're paging through Twitter or something like that. Um, although sometimes it's hard to pay attention because like, you know, it, honestly, it can, it can sometimes be boring too. Um, but then you'll miss these moments that are really, really interesting um, and special too. Um, and um yeah, I was, I was always really, especially with my, my first kid, I was like super fascinated, like it just what a baby is, because it's just so strange and hard to relate to what it, what the baby is experiencing. Like, it's just, um, for it, everything is totally new. And it's almost like not human in a way, like it doesn't share any of the shared experience of, of humanity. Um, and, and it doesn't know anything in it. Or, or in the case, case he doesn't know anything. So like what, yeah, what, that's just really interesting to watch. Like, how does that turn into a human? It's going down some really long path of, which I would say is kind of a novelty search. Oh, it, it's a hundred percent a novelty search is right. You know, like how do I get the, the adults to do the thing that I want when I don't even have language to process what it is <laughs> that I want. The only thing you yeah. really have, you know, the observation that I have about like uh, when you're going to give it a bath, right? Like it gets a little bit cold and then freaks out because its tolerances are so low that the that the millions of years of evolution have told it, if you get outside of these tolerances, freak out because, you know, yeah. to get any, you, you can't, you can't recover <laughs> on your own. So you're required yeah. to force other people to pay attention to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like strange things like where does, how does it, well, I mean, maybe at two months they wouldn't have, but how do they have a sense of humor when they're like six months old or something like, like they think peek peekaboo is funny, but like, why, how did they get this idea that that's funny? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Where does that follow from? It's like sense of humor is just so innate or something. It's like, it's, you're like born with a sense of humor. It seems like. Um, yeah. And then, and that's an interesting thing. Like, because I always, I mean, I'd been around little kids, but never when it was mine. So I had to pay attention to it so closely, but the, the, um, the fact that smiling isn't there from day one, right? Like it comes yeah. a month and a half in and then it's only intermittent and then you're trying to, but like, yeah. There's all these things that you think of as like, oh, that's just what it is to be human. And maybe it is, but it wasn't there to begin with. They, there was mm -hmm. some wiring that had to take place and some things that had to connect. And then all of a sudden it's there and it wasn't taught that. So was it always yeah. there? It's like a very difficult concept to wrap your mind around. Yeah, I guess we don't really know. And it's yeah, the, the concept of what's in the is, is really slippery because it's, it's like some combination of what's uh, there from the beginning and then and then inevitability, like inevitability doesn't get talked about that much, but like some things, it's not like, it's not like an objective driven process where it's like, you, if you start here and I keep on measuring, I make sure that you go there. It's more like if I, if you start here and then you just keep exploring, like you will inevitably hit this no matter what you do. Um, and that, that tends to be true on the early stuff like when you're starting out on a journey, like the later stuff tends not to be inevitable. Like it's not inevitable that you're going to be hosting like a, a podcast. Like that's not inevitable. Um, but it is inevitable that you're going to walk somehow. 
um, cause way earlier on the journey, it seems like all, like just about everybody hits walking like in, when they're in, but you could look at it as an objective thing. Like, okay, it was supposed to walk. So it learned how to walk, but I think maybe not. I think like the, the baby is initially thinking, Oh, how do I walk? Like it's, it's gaining stepping stones just by trying things. It doesn't know what it's leading to. It has no idea. It's going to eventually be walking. Yeah, and it's different, I think, if you're the second child and you can see, I see a behavior that this other child has that I want to get. But the fact that the first one figured out how to walk when they didn't even know that that was a part of their, um, you know, future vocabulary. Or what, the, what, or, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I was thinking like the, the things that lead to walking, like why did it, why did it pick those up? Like it wasn't doing it, like if it had to wiggle its its toes or wiggle its feet. Um, or sit up or it's not like every time it made an advance like that it was like okay this is what i need to do to figure out how to walk it was doing them for other reasons just like the vacuum tube in the computer it just that's interesting in its own right i'm gonna see if i can do this like I i'm not thinking about walking right now <laughs> yeah and then there's this also like when you add in the layer of parenting there's this weird thing and I, you know, I think we used to live in communities much more. So you'd be surrounded by children. You'd have been watching them be raised. You'd, you'd have a sense mm. like, I don't know why we sing this song or, or play the itsy bitsy spider or do the, the, this little piggy went to market, but that those things ended up helping guide the child. And so now living in this world where I'm having to be like, okay, I know we used to do these songs. I think they're important. Um, but, but then not really knowing and like them being remnants of our culture as a thing that has to be passed on in order to be able to help the child get to those <laughs> things that were inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting too. Yeah. There are these like just cultural things we don't even remember. Like why, why is that the way we do things? It's just there. So as a, as a parent, when you think about the inevitability things, but you also think about, you know, by four years old, they have got to be socialized because if they're not socialized, then mm. they're likely not going to be. How do you think about your role in, in interacting with the inevitability? Hmm. Well, I guess it's the, the thing is, well, that's a good point. Yeah. Like, I guess it, some things are more inevitable than others, I guess I would say, like, like, it's true that even walking is not truly inevitable. I mean, if you did something horrible, you, you, know, <laughs> you don't let the kids sit up for its, the first two years of life. Like, it, maybe it, it, it won't learn to walk. Um, so, like, it, there has to be some reasonable conditions around, like the expected conditions. Um, like, especially, like, if you don't talk, like, it won't learn any language, obviously. No one ever talks. Um, and so, so, yeah, like, when it gets to more complex higher level things like socializing um i think yeah things get a little less inevitable like there's still uh, some things are still kind of inevitable but but uh, you know it's maybe it's a continuum it's not like it is inevitable or it isn't there's just a degree of inevitability um and so like complete social deprivation probably means that some things that normally are inevitable won't happen um and you're, you're gonna have real problems so you try to give them um like some of the like reasonable experiences i guess that 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 you think help it to, to climb those stepping stones and discover those things for for itself and as you're imagining the world that your children will go into uh what do you think you will guide them towards such that they'll they'll be resilient in a world that may be filled with artificial intelligence <laughs> that can outcompete them uh oh, yeah. on on every domain of intelligence yeah, well, that's a really hard question because we don't really understand that world at all. Um, we're not, I, I guess, I don't think we're preparing them for that. I mean, I mean, we as in like anybody, I don't, I don't think we're preparing our children for that world because we don't know anything about it. Um, we, um, we're, we're preparing children for a world where other people are in control of the world. Um, and, and so that's sort of how we understand the world that they're entering into. Um, like there's no training or there's no experiences to help them get used to dealing with artificial intelligence. Like, I don't know what they're, what to do with them. Um, we should build the artificial intelligence to accommodate us, hopefully. So we don't have to be accommodated to it. Um, but, but it's going to be, it's just, that world is so exotic and different that, that I just don't know what, what to do about it. I have no idea. I don't know what it's like at all. 
Are you, uh, and I'll, and then I'll relent on the parenting questions, but it's something that fills my mind. I'm, so I'm very curious about how other people handle it, but how do you think about things like uh, computer screens and, and the amount of time children spend in these spaces where so much of their learning is, is instituted through uh, electronic means? Yeah. I mean, I think right now it's really hard with the pandemic to really be principled in addressing that issue because it's just like it's like required for certain things so um right now i think you just have to compromise like there's going to be some there's going to be some screen time no matter what your particular beliefs are um but i guess in general yeah ideally i think uh, the ideal would be to not be completely saturated in screen time um like i just i guess my intuition is that like being around actual physical stuff is good for you mentally. So um, so hopefully a, a significant part of your time can be in that. But, but I also don't think, I wouldn't, I'm not like a super purist. Like, I don't think it's like horrible to have some screen time either. Um, I don't think that's terrible. That's my, my I kind of think with, that things work out. I mean, I'm not a child psychologist, so I could be completely wrong, but... I kind of think like as long as there's a generally reasonable amount of normal experiences, like things will probably work out okay. Um, so I'm not super worried about it, um, but I do think that like you want you want for mental health and you you want some amount of like natural experience. Like that's how we evolved. Like we're we're, we're part of the physical world, and and that's probably good for us, is my guess. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.